Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena game for video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at an approach of the second sun deck. The 7 mana rare sorcery says if the spell was cast from your hand and you've already cast another spell named Approach of the Second Sun this game, you win the game. Otherwise, put Approach of the Second Sun into its owner's library, 7th from the top, and you also gain 7 life. So the goal of the deck is to win the game by casting two copies of Approach of the Second Sun. And to help us accomplish that, we're also playing the 6 mana rare enchantment, Sunbird's Invocation, which says whenever you cast a spell from your hand, reveal the top X cards of your library where X is that spells converted mana cost, and you may cast a spell with converted mana cost X or less from among those cards without paying its mana cost, and then the rest goes on the bottom. So if we can play Sunbird's Invocation and follow that up by casting Approach of the Second Sun, we'll get to look at the top 7 cards to potentially find another copy of Approach of the Second Sun with Sunbird's Invocation, and because the second approach that we get with the Sunbird's Invocation resolves first, by the time the Approach of the Second Sun that we originally cast resolves, it will have checked for another approach being cast and we essentially win the game on the spot so if we get lucky we can just win the game by casting a single approach and hitting the second one with the sunbird's invocation but of course we can also just win by eventually casting a second approach from our hand so that's the goal of the deck and of course to get to six and seven mana we do need some ramp and we do need some control elements to survive long enough to get to those expensive cards so let's take a look at the rest of the deck. First off, we're playing Kahira, the Orphan Guard, as our companion, just as a free roll, since we're not playing any creatures in this deck, but it can be useful as just a 3-2 blocker, or we can maybe discard it to a pirate spillage, so having an extra card to work with can be useful. Then at 2 mana, we've got some Artifact Ramp with the full playset of Guardian Idol, 2 mana Artifact that comes into play tapped, but can then tap for colorless mana, and for 2 mana, Guardian Idol becomes a 2-2 Golem Artifact creature that can maybe help us block. Do have to be careful when activating the Guardian Idol because it does tend to tap the Idol itself when you activate the ability which of course will prevent you from blocking with it so you do have to be careful there and then the full playset of Mindstone, which is a 2 mana ramp artifact that can also be sacrificed to draw a card. And unlike Guardian Idol, we can play the Mindstone and tap it for mana right away. So it essentially only costs 1 mana to play Mindstone if we can make use of the mana it generates right away. And then we've got the full playset of Treasure Map, which also plays an important role in this deck. A 2 mana artifact, and for 1 mana we can tap it and scry 1 and put a landmark counter on Treasure Map. And then if there are three or more landmark counters on treasure map, we can transform it into treasure cove, which is a land that can sacrifice treasure tokens to draw a card. And we also get three treasure tokens when treasure map transforms. And those are artifacts that we can potentially also sacrifice to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. So treasure map does a great job of ramping us into Sunbird's Invocation and Approach of the Second Sun, thanks to those treasure tokens and the fact that it transforms into a land. But treasure map is also very useful at helping us find a second copy of Approach if we've cast one from hand, since it will go back into our library 7th from the top, so we can use this cry 1 to dig towards that second copy of Approach a lot faster to essentially win the game. And then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Sweltering Suns as our sweeper of choice, since we can also cycle it in matchups where we don't need a sweeper effect. And then at 4 mana we've got some more Artifact Ramp with Hedron Archive. My favorite play is playing turn 2 Mindstone or Guardian Idol, turn 3 Hedron Archive, and then we can tap it for double colorless right away and still play one of these 2 mana artifacts. So that's very mana efficient, and we can also sacrifice Hedron Archive to draw 2 cards if we're flooding out a bit. And then we also have the full playset of Pirate Spillage, a sorcery that as an additional cost we have to discard a card. And then we get to draw two and make two treasure tokens. So once again this helps us ramp towards Approach and Sunbird's Invocation. And also helps us filter or draw. Sometimes we draw too many sweepers in matchups where we don't need them. And we can get rid of them. Or we can just get rid of lands or additional cards we don't need to dig towards the combo pieces. And then the treasure tokens also synergize with a transformed treasure map since we can sacrifice them to draw additional cards. And then we also have two copies of Wrath of God to complement our Sweltering Suns. Sometimes you face creatures that don't die to the three damage, and you need something heavy duty. And this can also clean up something like a Fraction Obliterator without having to sacrifice three permanents. So that's nice, and that's also the reason why we're playing it over Storm's Wrath, which could also be a nice answer to Planeswalkers. And then in the flex slot, we've got two copies of Cast Out as a four-man enchantment with Flash, that when it enters a battlefield, lets us exile target a non-land permanent an opponent controls until Cast Out leaves the battlefield. 
and we can also cycle it for a single white mana. So the opportunity cost of including cast out is very low because it has cycling, so we can always replace it with something else. But it's still a nice impactful spell that we can potentially hit with a Sunbird's Invocation if we cast anything with converted mana cost 4 or greater, and there's no shortage of those in the deck. So just a nice card to include in the deck. And then at 6 mana, of course, we've got our full playset of Sunbird's Invocation, which is mainly here to combo with Approach to try and find a second approach, but is also just a nice card advantage engine with all these powerful 4 mana cards that can hit more artifact ramp. And so we've got very few cards that were sad to hit with a Sunbird's Invocation. Sometimes we might hit a sweeper on an empty board, and that's not great, but for the most part we're playing permanents that we're happy to play. And then, of course, the full place of Brooch of the Second Sun. So sometimes we can just draw multiples and win the game that way without having to cast the exact same copy twice. And a quick side note about Approach of the Second Sun, since it's not the most intuitive card to play with, it doesn't matter whether or not the first copy you cast resolves or not, as long as you cast one copy of Approach, if you cast a second one and that resolves, you win the game. So if you're playing against a control deck, you're very happy if the opponent counters your first Approach of the Second Sun, since that will still be flagged as a copy of Approach being cast, and then as soon as the second one resolves, you win the game. Of course, if they counter your second Approach of the Second Sun, you won't necessarily win the game on the spot, but just an interaction to keep in mind. And then going over the mana base, we've got 24 lands, including 2 Temple of Triumph, 4 Sacred Foundry, 4 Clifftop Retreat, 8 Mountains, 4 Plains, and 2 Castle Ardenvale as another mana sink to potentially generate some 1-1 one -one chum blockers. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with uh, a reasonable hand, it's a little on the slow side with no 2 mana artifacts but we've got some interaction with Sweltering Suns and then Archive Ramps into Sunbird's Invocation. Alright, our hand got quite a bit better now. Opponent with an Opt. And Explore, so it might be a Field of the Dead Ramp deck, which isn't going to be an easy matchup, but we do have some sweepers to clear the zombies and then hopefully we can combo kill them before they overwhelm us. And if an Ugin shows up, most of our permanents are colorless, so those are safe from the spirit dragon. Might see another opt end of turn, or they were keeping up shock. So if there's some sort of teamer deck, it could be a niv -Mizzet. Curiosity deck with a bit of green for ramp. Alright, I'm just gonna play the Sunbirds here. And then we're looking for approach. Another Sunbirds. It's not bad. I'll keep it. Can get me a Sunbird trigger and potentially find some nice value cards as our opponent keeps ramping. Currently only single red mana, so if they're trying to cast niv -Mizzet, that's not going to be super easy. And yeah, let's cast another Sunbirds. We get a trigger. And how about another Sunbirds? Or do I just take a Hedron Archive that I can sacrifice for two cards? If I take the Sunbirds and then draw and draw anything relevant, that's kind of bad. Although I can always cast Sweltering Suns or Kahira. And with triple Sunbirds, if I do find an approach, I'm very likely to find a second. The only concern is maybe an Ugin wiping my board and losing all my Sunbirds. So let's take an Archive, kind of hatch our bets a little bit. Opponent does have a lot of mana available, maybe they're playing some counter spells, who knows. Alright, and then I could put Kahira in hand here, or I could end of turn sack Archive. Let's put Kahira in hand. Alright, red mana untapped, and there's Niv Mizzet. Fair enough, at least they didn't have a curiosity to go with it. So now I gotta find some answers. I think I start by casting Pirate Spillage. If that finds a Wrath of God, great. And maybe draws me into an approach to win the game. 
Let's play Pillage. And discard probably a lance. Could also hit a cast out as another answer to Niv. That doesn't even trigger Niv's ability. And yeah, there's a cast out, so that seems good. Although they could have another Niv in hand pretty easily. Although then we'll have another cast out. So do I play Kahira? Yeah, that seems fine. Sweltering Suns all decline. And decline. Alright, so not the best Sunbird triggers there. But that's fine. And we've got cast out at the ready with Flash. There's another Nif as expected. And Explorer in response will cast out Nif. Find a Pirate Spillage. Sadly, that will trigger Nif still. Don't really care if Kahira dies. And an Archive. Alright, so we'll untap and then we can potentially draw some cards with Archive. Just trying to find an approach. And then we'll scry before sacking another archive. Another sunbirds. Alright, I guess we'll go for it. Hit for three. And then I could sack a bunch of treasures to play another Sunbirds. I think I'll wait. Just play Mindstone for now. Hit a treasure map. One approach goes to the bottom, sadly. And then end of turn, I can maybe sack a Mindstone or scry a treasure map. What I don't want to see is a third Niv into Curiosity, but if they're gonna start with a Shock, that probably means they don't have another Niv in hand. Uro is fine. Alright, so... Between all the scries from the treasure maps and our draw steps, we're pretty likely to find an approach next turn. They can escape Uro, but their life total doesn't matter. So we'll scry with the map. Upkeep, scry some more. Take our draw. And then I think I'll draw with Archive here. Or I can draw with Mindstone, I suppose. Another idol. Alright, our uh, approaches are hiding. Nothing. All right, let's just swipe the board. And there's one approach gone. Let's get rid of an idol. And another approach gone. Maybe I should cast a Sweltering Sun so it's not in my deck anymore. 
because we're starting to get to the point where we're cycling through our entire deck. So I just want to get rid of cards I don't want. And we'll get rid of a Sacred Foundry. So we know some of the cards in our deck. Definitely no lack of card advantage here. But the problem is if we cast Sunbird's Invocation, it skips past Approach since that's 7 mana. That we can't cast. So I don't necessarily want to play more Sunbirds. Although I do know a few approaches are on the bottom now from the Sunbirds. Yeah, I think I still scry here. Sweltering Suns will bottom. Mountain will bottom. And there we go. Alright, so I guess, do I have enough mana to play Sunbirds into Second Sun? I think I do. Just give us the maximum chance of hitting another approach. Finds Archive, I guess. And I don't think my opponent's packing any counter spells. Approach, three Sunbird triggers. So we basically get to look at our entire deck, find another approach. And hopefully win the game. So the second copy resolves first. And then the original will have seen the other approach being cast. And we win the game. Sweet. So it took a while. Had to go through our entire deck essentially to find it. But we had enough interaction to keep the opponent from comboing themselves. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Turn to Guardian Idol. Can help us ram towards Pirate Spillage to fix our mana to cast our white spells if needed. Facing a Jeskai deck and an Arcanist, so Jeskai Feather. So the Wrath of God is going to be important. Play the Sacred Foundry in case we draw planes and we need to cast Wrath of God. Sprite Dragon with one man up for maybe a protection spell. We'll just play Archive into Mindstone. My favorite play. Gives us a nice mana boost. This is how you cast a turn for Ugin the Spirit Dragon, by the way. Ah, opponent's tapped out. So if we can draw a white source, we're in great shape. And Pirate Spillage can make the treasures needed to cast Wrath of God, so... Play Pillage, probably discarding Mindstone. And then play Wrath. Now we're still down to 7 here, so can't feel too comfortable. Play treasure map. And then I wonder if I want to cast out now. Can also technically block with a guardian idol. Let's just pass.
I'll take two. Don't want to play cast out now, have them play a protection spell like God's Willing and take additional damage. Hallow Blade is indestructible, so that one I kind of need to cast out. So we'll start by scrying. And then I could sacrifice a Mind Stone here. Yep, there's a God's Willing. Well, I guess now I'm digging for Approach of the Second Sun to just gain seven and try and stay alive that way. Can I afford to scry with Treasure Map? Can I afford to sack Mind Stone? Three, five, six, seven, eight. I think I do sack Mind Stone. Castle Ardenvale can also potentially buy me some time. Another archive, I'll bottom. Well, there's approach. So can cast it, go up to 10. And then if we're lucky, there's another approach on top. Definitely not impossible for the opponent to deal 10 damage to me here. And that's 7. So upkeep we get another scry with the treasure map. Pirate's Pillage. So if I Pillage, does that leave me enough mana to still cast an approach afterwards? I'll get two treasures. Three, four, five, six, seven. Now it's not going to draw me into the approach we know about, but it still probably gives me the best chance here. Because it digs me a card deeper than if I bottomed with a treasure map. So cast pillage, and then I probably want to keep my white sources untapped in case I need to activate castle. Ah, uh, no approach. Alright, now the question is, can I survive another attack step? If they have any instant speed removal, the answer is probably no. Let's see, I can put Kahira in hand and play it, but that's six treasures, so I'm better off just making a token and activating Guardian Idol. And then can I afford to play Treasure Map to Scry? It would be nice if I can. Actually, I think I can. It's gonna be a close one. If they have a Reckless Rage, we're just dead. Alright, so step one. Make a token with Castle Ardenvale. Then I can activate Guardian Idol, and then use the Guardian Idol itself to scry with the treasure map. Do they have the removal spell? They don't seem to have it. So block, and then before damage I still get to scry with map. And then the only card we care about is approach. This approach is three cards down. So, scry with the map. 
Let's see, what happens if I take my draw step, sack archive, I draw two. This will be tapped alongside two lands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I don't think I need to scry with the map here since I'm guaranteed to get it if I just draw with archive. So, sack archive. And our opponent concedes. Wow, what a nail biter. If they had any instant speed removal, we die there, but just enough card draw and scry with the treasure map to redraw the same approach. And yeah, sometimes that's how you beat the aggressive decks, just by gaining seven and then a couple turns later casting the same approach again. Sweet, onto the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable control hand. So if we're up against a creature deck, this is gonna play out pretty well for us. Treasure map to provide a bit of card selection and card advantage and then two sweepers. Glacial Fortress, not the best sign. Do need more lanes, so I'm fine playing out the temple. Sometimes you want to wait on playing the temple until you've got more information about what specific cards you need. But in this instance, I knew for a fact that I could bottom lands, so it seemed fine to play it out. Maybe a Field of the Dead to ramp deck. Sadly, I'm gonna have to mute the opponent because the dog is a little bit loud. Let's just play the map. And there's an explorer. And there's Field of the Dead. Alright, so against Field, having sweepers is nice, but we do need to eventually find Sunburst and Approach to win the game, since we're not going to win a long game against a horde of zombies. But as we mentioned, the fact that we've got mostly colorless cards is useful against Ugin and the Spirited Dragon. I'll keep a Guardian Idol. It's not an action card, but it does set me up to potentially cast a Sunbird's Invocation or Approach if I draw one. So seems good enough. And then cast out could be an answer to Uro. So they can't escape it forever. And just looking for Sunbirds, maybe Hedron Archive, and Approach of the Second Sun. Yeah, let's just play Guardian Idol and a tapped Sacred Foundry. Could also decide to cycle cast out. It's definitely an option. Second Field of the Dead. Gross Spiral, so they might make their first zombie here in a second. There we go, two zombies. Yeah, the way this game is playing out, I think I need to cycle cast outs. Upkeep Scry. Pirate Spillage isn't bad. So I can pillage, discarding a land, or I can get rid of one of the two sweepers. Because I'll probably draw into another sweeper at some point, so I don't know if I need to keep all of them. Sweltering Suns is a little cheaper, Wrath of God can maybe also catch an Uro. So I think I'll discard the Sweltering Suns. And then keep land so I can still play the treasure map afterwards. All right, so we're in a perfect spot to top deck approach since we can quickly redraw it with the scry and the draw from Treasure Cove. Ugin a Spirit Dragon wouldn't be the end of the world. And we've got a Wrath of God to clean things up. Opponent does nothing. They might expect a sweeper, so they don't want to over commit. Not a pillage, I guess I'll take it. So I don't want to tap my treasure cove. Probably not going to block with the uh, idols. I guess I need some red mana too. Up 
pillage, discard lanes. And then I'll draw main phase. And there's approach. I think I'm fine to cast it here. Losing four treasures, that's probably fine. Just want to speed up the process of redrawing it. Now, some versions of Field of the Dead have started playing Pact of Negation. That's definitely a card my opponent could have. Sell the wreckage. I guess I just want to escape Uro here. Which plays into my Wrath of God game plan. Alright, upkeep will scry. And anything that's not an approach is probably going to the bottom. So I'll start things off with the Wrath of God in case I do have a Pact of Negation. I want to make sure I can cast a second one. Uh, it didn't seem like they had a Pact. We'll draw with Cove. And then I can still play my Archive. And we're getting pretty close to redrawing the approach here. Not sure why it's hiding here, but... Oh, right. I guess we shuffled our deck with the Seller Wreckage. That's unfortunate. I totally forgot. Even though we didn't search up any lanes. Forgot to put a stop on upkeep, but I guess that's okay here. Yeah, that Settler Wreckage shuffling my deck is actually going to be super important this game, otherwise we easily would have won. Didn't think there was a way for me to not shuffle. It is a May ability, but I uh, don't know if the shuffling is optional, because we didn't really have an option not to. I think I start by scrying with the map. Not our sunbirds. I think that's going to be too slow. We'll draw with Cove. And then I can go sunbirds into Wrath. I might want to keep land in hand in case I find another pirate spillage. Because my opponent can make some more zombies end of turn, so it's not just the four zombies in play that I have to worry about. Find Archive. Probably my best bet for immediate card draw. And then I can also put Kai Hira in hand. So I'll have something to discard, so I'm fine pulling out the land then. Or I can just draw end of turn with Archive, that's probably more relevant. Alright, so opponent gets to make a couple more zombies here. We're at 13. We've got a couple draw engines to find another approach. Rejuvenator. Can maybe find another field of the dead. Just sag the archive now. Alright, there's approach, so that should do it, unless they've got a counter spell. But I could always find another approach with the Sunbird's invocation as well. Another Sunbird will do. And my opponent explodes. Alright, despite a small setback there with the Settler Vanket shuffling my deck, we were still able to find another approach, but with four copies in the deck and all the draw effects we had in play, it wasn't too unlikely 
Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Lures of the Dream Den, which probably implies Spirit Dancer. And that is going to be a tough matchup, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. But this hand gives me a shot because I have a Sweltering Suns. Although, on the draw, the Spirit Dancer probably going to have more th than 3 toughness by the time we can play it. Cast out is potentially an answer to it, although it might be too slow. But, you know, this hand can maybe ramp into an approach with a Pirate Spillage. That's one way we can win. Alright, never mind, it's a Sacrifice deck. Much rather play against a Red-Black Sacrifice deck with Lurus than a Spirit Dancer one. And I'll keep a line on top. So Sweltering Suns is probably going to be more useful here. Cast Out can exile something like a Lurus, so they can keep getting it back. And we don't care too much about a card like Priest of Forgotten Gods, because we don't have any creatures. Thoughtseize can be effective, but it's not game over against us. We're not a flimsy combo deck that relies on a single card. Since we've got so much card draw, we get to quickly go through our deck and find more copies of whatever they take away. Not too keen on casting Sweltering Suns with a Stitcher Supplier in play. Although our graveyard's pretty empty at the moment. Opponent puts Lurus in hands, not a very threatening play. And I'll play Guardian Idol. Well, if the game goes long, we can just hard cast two approaches, so that works for me. Village Ride Sacking Supplier. Mills Double Young Pyromancer. That's fine. They could play Lurus, but they won't get any value from it this turn. It's gonna be another Thoughtseize. Taking the Sweltering Suns, but I don't really care about Sweltering Suns. We can just go over the top with Approach here. Uh, let's probably Pillage Discarding Pillage, because I kind of want to keep the lands to hardcast another Approach. Could even play a Sunbird's Invocation first. They've cast most of their Thought Seizes already. They've got one left in the deck. So don't hit my spot. Opponent plays Croxa. Alright, that's pretty effective against me. They can also sacrifice Croxa to the Phyrexian Tower in response to the trigger. I think I just discard the Sunbirds and the plan is then to just hard cast double approach. And a village rights instead. So next turn they can potentially play Lurus and then replay Croxa from the graveyard. Which is one way to attack my hand. But I can discard Mountain and then we've got exactly 7 mana to replay Approach. So unless I've got a Thought Seize or Double Croxa, we should still get there. They are going to start with Lurus. Four mana available thanks to Phyrexian Tower. Maybe they're hoping to village rights into their last thought seize here. It's gonna be Young Paramancer. And claim the firstborn to give Lurus haste. But that's not gonna cut it here. Cast approach. And win the game. Wow. Alright, so. Our deck definitely performing quite well. We went undefeated today, facing a pretty wide variety of decks. Some more controlling combo decks, Feel of the Dead, and then aggro decks with a Feather deck and then 
even a grindy sacrifice deck as well. So kind of got the whole range of decks here. Not going to claim that this is the best historic deck out there, but if you're looking for a control deck with a nice combo finish that doesn't play blue, then uh, this might be a deck you're interested in. All right, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.